right, welcome. I need four people to play a game. Aaron, number one, come on up. I need three more people. Come on up, Ava. Come on, two more people. Pick a table, any table. Pick a table. Stand behind a table. I need two more. Jesse, you coming up too? All right, come on up. All right. Oh, man. Kids ministry starting this off right. All right. Do you see that big old bowl full of cotton balls? Hey, don't eat those. Okay? Don't eat the cotton balls. All right. So this is going to be a transfer game. So what you're going to do, you see that spoon that's right next to your bowl? Grab your spoon. All right. The goal is to grab one. Are you left-handed? You, okay, we're going to move your bowl, okay? Actually, we'll do it like that. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your spoon and you're going to grab a cotton ball and move it into the next uh, bowl. You cannot use your thumb. You know what I mean, Aaron? Okay. So when you take it, you're going to grab in, you're going to reach in, you're going to grab one cotton ball. You see that one cotton ball? Pay attention, because you guys might be doing this next. And then you're going to move it over here. You understand, Jessa? Okay. When I say go, you're going to move it. You cannot grab the, with a spoon and your thumb to move it. Does that make sense, Aaron? No? It does? Okay. You guys have any questions? You nervous? All right, you ready? Get set. All right, y'all need to make some noise out here. Ready, set, go! Come on, let's go. Grab one. Hey, we got one over. Come on, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Make sure you don't use your other hand to grab and move it. I just can't hear myself, which is okay. I don't need to hear myself. Keep going. Let's go 15 seconds. Come on, crowd. Let's cheer them up. Come on, let's go. All right, let's count them down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Drop your spoon. All right. Go ahead and lower my music. All right, let's see. We have one, two, three, four. You did more than I've ever done. Four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's give Jessa a round of applause. All right, let's see. Oh, man. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh man, we got a tie right now. What did you do? Were you watching her? Was she using her hand, moving them, right? Okay, the most I ever got was four. Alrighty, you guys, you guys play this at home, don't you? No? All right, let's see. One. Two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I feel like I keep counting. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right. All right. Hold on. Let's see. All right. We have an official winner. 
And sorry, Jess and Aaron. We have someone who got 16. Oh, man. Ava, how many do you think you got? You think you were close? Good number. All right. So our official winner is Marin with 16. Ava, you did get 14. Good job. All right, go ahead and take your seats. All right, who's next? Lawrence, come on up. I need three more. Ariane, coming up. I need two more. Jesse, come on up. Come on, Marissa. Come on, Marissa. Come on, Marissa. All right, let's give him a round of applause. All right, if you are a new contestant, grab the, the cotton balls and put them in the bowl. Thank you, sir. Go ahead and pick up all those and put them up there. Oh, not yet. Wait till I say go. No cheating. No cheating. <laughs> No placement. All, of me, <laughs> all, of me. all right. The world you think you're going to win? You sure? You want to bet on it? You want to bet push ups? You sure? Oh, come on. All right. Crowd, we got to be a little bit louder for them. Because now we have kids ministry versus youth ministry. Are you guys going to represent for Epic? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Pastor Brian, I got a, uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> hey, they came up. They're voluntarily up here. I didn't make Marissa come up. <laughs> She's so mad at me right now. All right, on your mark. When you hear that music go loud, you are going to start. Ready? Set. Oh, and, and, and come on, crowd. We, not, we need to be louder. These are your kids and grandkids. So ready, set, go. Get your hand off that bowl. Get your hand off that bowl. One hand at a time. Come on, you got it. One at a time, Jesse. One at a time. I ought to disqualify you. One at a time. Come on, crowd. We got 20 seconds. 20 seconds. All right, crowd. When you see 10 seconds, we're going to count them off. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Spoon down. Put your spoon down. All righty. Now, <clears throat> Mr. Jesse, what part of one at a time? I'm telling you, man, that guy, that, he literally went like this, went, <clears throat> was moving them all over. You got to break them up. All right. Do we count his? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right. If you think we should count his, raise your hand. One, two, three. If you're family with his, I'm not counting him. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're lucky you have a big family. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You don't count. You got 13. All right, if you think his should not count, raise your hand. All right, we're going to count him. I wasn't even going to count. I think you got to three that weren't, were against you. Bro, you got a big old family here, man. That's awesome. All right. We'll come to you in a minute. 
I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They get stuff together. It's kind of hard. What do we have? Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They get all sticky, don't they? All right, y'all laugh, but if you've never done this before, it's one of the hardest things to do because you got to literally separate all the cotton and everything. So Lawrence got four. Good job. That is four more than me right now. I think I would lose. All right, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right, Ariana. You didn't count yours yet? Don't touch them, I get them. Then you, now, see, you're cheating twice. Ah, oh, come on. All oh, you guys wanted to count his. And everything. They think there's more in here than there is there. What do you think? No, I can't count that high. Two. Three, four, nine, oh, that's five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. All right. All right, go ahead and get sit down. Thanks, guys. Give them all a round of applause. All righty. That's Brian, go ahead and turn me down just a little bit. Turn my mic up. I'm gonna drop a beat. I'm just kidding, I'm not really gonna rap. No, I, I don't rap. I don't sing. It sounds like a dying. Have you ever watched Garfield? Remember the little cat that's standing on the roof and they with the gap in her teeth and she'd sing and they Yeah, that they yeah, they throw shoes at me. Alright. Thank you guys for being here tonight. We have a fun event going on. Alright, as you see. We got tables, we got cotton balls. Don't worry, you'll be able to play if you want to. In here, we're gonna have a couple of relay races. Tonight's focus is about teamwork, okay? If you are new here, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. All right, so you see Pastor Brian just walked in. In Pastor Brian's section, he is gonna be running a youth favorite of human foosball. All right, if you wanna play human foosball, you're gonna go over to the youth room when I dismiss you, okay? Now, that is not all night long. You don't get to play all night long. You do have to come see me and hang out. Okay, now, because it's her first official Wednesday, as official staff on the church team, I am no longer low man on the totem pole, which is awesome. So I basically told her she gets to do a job. <laughs> and then I got in trouble. So, so in the kids' ministry room, if you haven't been to the kids' ministry room, you really need to see it. It came out phenomenal. Okay, but in the kids' ministry room, Miss Erin is going to test your brain. This is why I'm hanging out in here, because I don't have one. And I don't know. I have cotton balls. Yes, I have a brain full of cotton balls. Um, actually, there's going to be a bunch of games in here. There's going to be music going on in the youth room. Miss Erin's got the quiet room, if you want quiet and just brain teasers. I think she might have music on. I don't know. I don't know what she's got going on. She doesn't even know what she's got going on. All right. So we're going to get started, and then I'll release you, and then about 8, 10, we'll be done, and we'll all come back in here, and then we'll have a powerful message by Pastor Jeff. So, Pastor Jeff, can you come up and uh, bless tonight?
Lord Jesus, it is great to be here tonight. It is great to be here with our church family. We ask you that you bless each one of these games. Let everybody have fun. Whether they are testing their human foosball teamwork or, or they're testing how they're going to move uh, races and activities in here or they're testing their brains together, Lord, we just ask you to give them a great time. And Lord, we pray that we find ways to think about working together even more and better. In your name, amen. Amen. All righty. Do you know where you want to go? Have you thought about it? You have human foosball. Pastor Brian will explain the rules. You have a brain teaser. I don't even know what it's called. It's like a cryptograph or something like that. I don't know. I can't even figure them out. And then you got relay races in here. Tonight's focus is on teamwork, okay? What's tonight's focus on? Teamwork. Sweet. You guys are paying attention to me, which is... Not often. Um, I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Ben, he's shaking his head. He's not paying attention to me. That's normal. Um, I love you guys. Seriously, three, two, one, go. Go to the room you want to be in. Walk. I'm just kidding. You guys can run. I don't care. Just be careful. Oh, you can leave your coats. You can leave your wallets. Make sure it has money in it. I need to pay my truck bill. If you want to hang out with me, you might be coming back to me. Not everybody can go do foosball. Man, my sanctuary is clearing out quick. Well, it's going to be kind of hard to do a relay race with three. This is for the busted hearts This is for the question marks This is for the outcast soul Lost control, no one knows Sing it for the can't go back Sing it for the broken past Sing for the just found out Life is now upside down If you're looking for hope tonight Raise your hand If you feel alone and don't understand If you're fighting the fight of your life Then stand We're gonna make it through this sand in hand And
Left side move, right side move. Go, move, go ahead and move down. Riley, go ahead and move. All right, left side move, right side move. Yes. Okay. Alrighty, whoa. Woo! Maybe somebody wants to let Pastor Brian know. Thank you. Okay, now I'm only going to speak for like three hours. We're good. I'm kidding. I, nah. How many of you like team sports? How many of you would rather play solo sports where it's just you against the world? Okay, a couple of you. Now, what's the difference? What's the difference? You have to cooperate. Um, have you ever met somebody who's really good at an activity or a sport on their own, but they're not so good when they're on a team? Your husband, okay. Why is that? What makes some people good to play, but not good to play with others. Teamwork. That's one. What? Anything else? You ever meet somebody who's a little selfish? They have to have all the glory, right? They have to take all the shots. They have to be the famous one. 
They're all quarterbacks. The whole team is made up of quarterbacks. It's just that way. Now think about it for a second. We live in a world that focuses on, that praises personal performance, right? How many of you know your class doesn't get a grade? You get one. Your mom and dad don't really care what Jimmy got over there. They don't care. They don't want to know what you got. They want to know how that works for you, whether you're going to graduate. And we get in this idea that because we're faster or smarter or stronger than, you know, somebody else, we're better. Which reminds me, how many of you like superhero movies? Good for you. I don't. But, you know, you know what drives me crazy? Sorry. You know what drives me crazy about it? It's like, you know, if we can't play together, then we have to be even stronger. So the superheroes can do all this ridiculous stuff. So they can still do it on their own. And then they even need to have the Avengers or the Justice League or the, the, the what was it, the League of Doom, you know, whatever it's called. Right? You got to have this group, you know, to make it happen. When a job is big... We need to have people come together. Teams can almost always do the job better. Almost always do the job better. Now I want to talk for just a second about problems that uh, are need a team to solve. And I'm going to do all these out of Nehemiah. Now if you've, I'm sure you don't have your Bible sitting there for you, and that's fine. Go home, look up the chapters anyway if you want. Check out what I have to say. Just to make sure I get it right. It's always important. Nehemiah chapter 2, 17 and 18. Nehemiah says to them, you see the distress we're in. Jerusalem lies waste. Its gates are burned with fire. Come let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. Now think about it for a second. How many of you have a wall around your property? No. Did you see the big wall around the church? No, it's not there. Now, how many of you have, I know Ernie's been with me, and some of the others, how many of you have been in other countries that wall their entire property, right? I mean, if you don't wall it, people can build on it and do things. Now, imagine, this property is five acres. Can you imagine how big a wall would have to be to go all the way around it? What, what's that? 20? It'd be big. I don't know what the number is, Kathy. You probably do. I, I don't know what the number would be. So you think about it for a second. Why don't we have walls around our property? Noah, why does your house not have a wall around it? You, good. You're right. You don't need it. There's not too many Fowlerville barbarians coming to steal your stuff, right? You're good. Not too many hell barbarians. Okay, now imagine being back in the day when if you didn't have a wall, people could come and steal your stuff. That would be a little scary. It would make you want to have a wall. So Jerusalem, there's, nobody knows exactly how big it was back then. I tried to look up the walls of Jerusalem at the time of Nehemiah. It's hard. There's about 12 different answers. One of them says that they were almost 2.9 miles long. That's a lot of rocks. Another one said that it was only 32 acres in Jerusalem. A perfect square, that would be about 4,000 feet long. But now imagine, have you ever, and I think you did, Ernie, maybe. Remember when we went to New Hampshire and we had to take those stone walls apart? That was exhausting. And what do we do? Take apart 100 feet of wall? Maybe. Okay. Wasn't a killer. Now, now imagine trying to do two or three miles of that. And by the way, these walls were about 13 feet high and about 10 feet thick. How many of you know you've got a big job on your hands? And you have no cranes, no bulldozers, no nothing. It's all hand power, muscle power, arm power. That's a big job. It was an important job. They needed it. If they didn't have the wall, they couldn't sleep well at night. People could die. People could lose stuff. It was really important. So you and I might joke about a wall and think, who cares? But back then it mattered. And so they needed to get together and they needed to get it done. Now, that said, how many of you have jobs you don't like? What, what don't you like? You stand a lot, and it like hurts your feet and your legs and it gets boring. Okay? Anybody else, what job don't you like? Vacuuming. It's boring. Okay, anybody else? Yes, Evan. Walking. You don't like walking. You could crawl or run or, okay, anybody else? Oh, yes, uncomfortable, itchy, not fun at all. Anybody else? That's not fun for anybody, is it? I do that at my house, too. I, I, yeah, ugh, just something to do. Now, have you noticed that jobs that are pointless really drive you crazy? If you stand a lot, it gets boring. I used to work in a warehouse. If you want a boring job, and I'm not picking on it, I know that Kyle does. 
right? And he's brilliant at it. And he's busy all the time. My warehouse was not busy. And part of the job was you had to pretend to be busy if you weren't. So here you go. If I didn't have anything to do, you have to look like it. So you pick up a box from shelf A. You put it on shelf B. Five minutes later, you pick up the box from shelf B, and you put it on shelf C. Now, how many of you know if you're smart, you pick up the light box? You don't pick up the really heavy box because you didn't need to move it in the first place. That job was pointless. It drove me crazy. The jobs that are fun are the jobs that you like doing, that you're good at, and that just see a reason to do. Right? That's what you want to do. Those are the jobs that are important. Now, imagine for a second all of these people getting together to build this wall. How many of you know this is not a wall-building company? This is just a group of people who live there. They don't deal with stone every day of their life. This isn't something that they have to do all the time. Nehemiah 3 gives us a bunch of names that are that long, and I'll massacre them all. I'll say them badly. Mal Malkijah, the son of Haram, and Hashib, the son of Pahab Moab. I just like that kind of name. Repaired this section, as well as the Tower of the Ovens. And next to him was Shalom, the son of Halahesh, leader of the half the district, and, he, and his daughters made repairs. Hey, girls, you're in on it. Hanan and the inhabitants of Zenoa repaired the valley gate. They built it, hung its doors with its bolts. If you want to be safe from a wall, what do you want to be the safest part? The doors, the foundation. I'm going to be easier than that, the part where you are. If my house is here and the safest place is way over there, that's a problem. I want the wall to keep me safe. That's why I'm building it, right? So you, what they did was literally they broke everybody up and said, you build by your house. And everybody went, cool. And I want to be good at it. And they went out and they didn't stand around and they didn't move boxes between walls and they didn't do pointless stuff. They wanted to get themselves safe. Now, how many of you know that if you build the wall and your neighbor doesn't, it leaves a hole? If the hole's there, the bad guys can still come in. So if your neighbor's being lazy, what do you do to your neighbor? You kill him? Wow, that's rough. Yeah, Evan. You yell at them. You kick their butt. You do whatever you have to do. Everybody's got to get the job done. So in this particular situation, you had people that, you know, they knew what they were doing and others are just doing what they're told. You have people working where it's important to them. They're working together to get the job done. They're picking on each other if they're slow and lazy. And pretty soon the team comes together and the project starts happening. Now, if you've got to build a wall, how many of you would like to get it done? You don't want to build it forever. Now... I've been, on a couple, I've been on several missions trips. And again, some people, Ernie's been on, I think, every one that I've been on. And, and Ernie, there were a couple that I really remember pretty well. Number one was the Poland one in 03. That was a great team. If you ever have a chance to go on, you want one that's that good. And I'm not picking on anybody else's team. I have loved every team I have gone with. It has been a lot of fun, and I've learned a lot. But that team just adjusted to everything. They gave us this ridiculous job to dig a 100-foot trench four feet deep. How many of you would think that that would take a long time if you had no big digger? You had shovels. And they figured it was going to take us a week or a week and a half. And our team did it in one day. In one day, while doing other things. It was amazing. I mean, it just it didn't matter. And then about four or five days later, they said, you're out of money. And we said, yeah, no, we're not. And we took up an offering and we, we kept going. It was a great team. Everything came together. It was fantastic. It's a lot of fun when you find obstacles and you can rise to the occasion. It is fun. If you go on a trip where you're just sitting there picking your nose, you have a clean nose. That's all you get. Now look here at Nehemiah chapter 4. I'm almost done. Verse 11 says, And our adversaries said, They will neither know or see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. So it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came that they told us ten times, from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Therefore I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings, and I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. Now how many of you know if you're holding a weapon, you're probably not building? Kind of hard to build and watch at the same time. So that means some people weren't building anymore. How many of you think that would slow you down even more if you lost a big chunk of your workforce to hold weapons? 
And you might think, that's frustrating. It's going to take me longer. I'm going to have to carry more rocks. Life's going to be hard. I don't like it. And it says, they said, do not be afraid. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, wives, and houses. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his own work. When a team can adjust, it was fun to watch you guys up here. It was fun to watch the things that you did. I love the last round. Stephen, even though you did not win, I love the fact that your bowl started here and it ended up over here. Now, I will give Stephen a big kudo. He, I did never saw him move it. It wasn't like he was going. He wasn't doing that, right? You didn't cheat. He was trying to do the thing, but every, this thing just keeps moving when you stick the spoon in it. How many of you know he was adapting? Would it, how many would you have you gotten, Stephen, if you kept having to move it back? Would it slowed you down? Christian, I loved your move over here with the hand and the arm on the table. <laughs> you were prepped. You were ready, right? You adapt. You improvise. It's what you do. You manage to try something. Rather than getting mad. How many of you just get mad when things don't go your way? Yeah, some of you. Yeah. Right? It's easy to get mad. My schoolwork doesn't go my way. I don't get what I want. My job stinks. Boo-hoo. It's so easy to get mad. But a team that improvises and adjusts and makes it happen, that's awesome. Now, I want to give you a picture. Imagine a wall somewhere between 4,000 feet, which is a little short of a mile, and maybe three miles. Again, we don't know how long. That is maybe 13 feet high and maybe 10 foot wide. And it's not on a straight level surface. And it has gates and towers. How many of you think that might be more rocks than you want to carry? Me too. I wouldn't like it. Because you can't build it out of tiny little rocks. That won't work. So how long do you think it took them? How long? Nine days. That is awesome. That would be fantastic. That would be the best team ever. Good guess, Evan. Ten years. Well, you're probably closer, but still, they're great guesses. Ten years, nine days. Here's what it says. Nehemiah 6, 15. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul. What month is that here? I have no idea. In 52 days. 52 days. And it happened when all of our enemies heard of it. All the nations around us saw these things. They were disheartened in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was done by our God. When the team got together, when the team worked in their strength, when the team was motivated to get the job done, they were able to get the job done fast. And then they were safe at night. And they closed the gates and the bad guys couldn't come in and get them. Yay! The project was finished. And I was thinking as I read the story, what would happen if we did this wall in America? Let's see, if we were going to build a wall around Howell. First of all, we'd have to like, um, have an environmental impact study. And we'd have to have an engineering study. And we'd have to have an economic impact study. And that would take 10 years. And then after the lawyers mucked around with it for a while, they'd finally have a bid and they'd hire a company that would then take another 10 years to build the wall. And then somebody would get sued because they'd be built in the wrong place. So it would take your entire career to get the wall done and it wouldn't be right. How many of you know that's not a team, that's government, and that just never works right? Yeah. Instead, people that want to get it done and work together. So, you know what? I had a lot of fun. I've told a few people this story already. Pastor Brian drafted me to play human foosball. And I joke all the time. I am not a good sports person at all. I'm not coordinated. I'm not very fast. But compared to kids, I'm giant. So he put me in the front middle. And pretty soon, you guys were so brave behind me, you were saying, hey, you disqualify him. And I said, what do I do? You're too big. <laughs> I know, and I was trying. So then I got down on my knees, didn't I? And then they told me I could only use my head. <laughs> we had fun. And you know what? The team had fun playing. If it was just two people out there kicking the ball, you'd be bored in 30 seconds. 
How many of you played one game, two games, you played 15, 30 minutes, and you loved it? It was fun. Yeah. Some of you adults, I saw you grinning out there. I poked in and looked. I saw you at your tables as, as Miss Aaron had got those cryptograms together. And you, you, you were laughing and talking and trying to figure it out. Teamwork. Can I tell you something? If you have teamwork as a family, you'll have a lot more fun in life. And you'll get stuff done. I don't care if you have a little family or a big one. If you come together as a church and you say we're going to have teamwork, we're going to have teamwork in youth, we're going to have teamwork in kids' ministry, we're going to have teamwork for adults, it'll work great. But if we kind of sit and just expect somebody else to do it, and I'm, I'm saying anybody do, does that, I'm just saying that happens a lot in America, doesn't it? If we expect somebody else to do it because they're paid, because they're smarter than us, because we don't want to, things are boring and they get done a lot slower. So students, you're back in school now, right, even if it's virtual. If you can work with other students online or in class, do it. I'm not saying cheat. That would be bad. Pastor told me to cheat. No, I didn't. I said work together when it's appropriate. And you'll find schools a lot more fun, and you get a lot more learned. Be a team. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we've had fun tonight. Whether figuring things out with our brain or kicking the ball down the, the, the room or passing marshmallows. We've had fun. And Lord, it's great to have fun. Sometimes we have to kind of, you know, step back from all the study and all the, the, the learning. And we just got to try to do something else. And you can still teach us that way. So Lord, I pray that we laugh about all the things that we got to do together tonight. And then we go back to our normal lives tomorrow, whatever that looks like. School from home, working from home, going someplace else. I pray that we go in. And Lord, we work as a team with our friends and our family and our fellow Christians. We start seeing things that are big get solved a lot faster and with a lot more enjoyment. God, help us to stop trying to always compete. And sometimes the best things to do is are cooperate. We thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. I hope you had fun, and I hope you have a great night tonight and a great day tomorrow. God bless you.